हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदा दीप आई हॉस्पिटल फेको टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी स्पीकिंग अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इवेंट इन फेको सर्जरी विच कॉल्ड द सर्ज सो आई विल डिस्कस वॉट इज द थॉट प्रोसेस वेन द सर्ज हैपन्स ड्यूरिंग सर्जरी सो इन दिस केस आई एम गोइंग टू यूज अर्टली सी आर थ्री मशीन दिस अ ग्रेड वन कैटरैक्ट एंड plan is to try to divide this uh, soft nucleus into pieces and then uh, do fecal aspiration uh, being soft cat track it's always difficult to chop this kind of uh, grade of nucleus i am going to use the very low flow and low vacuum in the initial part of the surgery and uh, once i find that uh, there is division and one piece i can take it out from the bag i'm going to go to the higher vacuum setting so now i can see that uh, there is one piece which is separate so i'm going to use high vacuum and that's when i notice the surge watch it again the ac collapses as the occlusion breaks now the thought process is i check the infusion line bottle is full no kink in the tubing tubing is properly attached to the probe so there is no problem with the inflow and then i notice that there is significant egress of fluid through the incision and my assistant now told me that he has given me 2.2 mm sleeve while i have made a 2.8 mm incision so there is definite a mismatch so this can also happen if i have made a inadvertently large incision when the patient moves eye during incision making so what are the possible ways to tackle this situation i can use a 2.8 mm sleeve or if the incision is too large i can suture and hydrate the incision make a new one that's the easiest option or i can resort to low flow settings i can reduce the flow rate and vacuum till i get a stable anterior chamber so here i am going to ask my assistant to start reducing the flow rate and the vacuum proportionately and uh, till the point that i find the anterior chamber is stable still you can see there are fluctuations so i am going to ask my assistant to reduce the vacuum and flow rate further and i noticed that when i reduced it to 50% of the original parameters i found that the anterior chamber is quite stable now and uh, i could emulsify rest of the nucleus without any high risk of posterior capsular rupture of course if i still find that there are fluctuations i might resort to making a new incision and completing the surgery so you can find that once i shift to 2.8 mm sleeve the anterior chamber is well stable with the previous parameters also so let's speak about when you notice this kind of surge during the surgery what is the thought process that you have to follow so first look at the inflow check for the bottle if it is empty check for the disconnection of the tubing so if there is any kink in the inflow tubing which may reduce the inflow check if there is a free flow from the iv attachment or if there are bubbles which have trapping the fluid from free flow if there is a torn sleeve which is leaking fluid then check for the outflow if there are any leaking incisions like in this case uh, or if you are depressing the incision too excessively during the surgery which is leading to higher outflow from the incisions look for the proper settings remember that for each incision size and type of echo tip used the different settings have to be used and if you have set it very high high flow rate and vacuum and you have placed the bottle light too low for those parameters then you may have the surge So remember this point that FECO parameters are different for different incision sizes and also varies according to the type of FECO tip used. So you should use appropriate FECO settings. For more such videos, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and do visit our website fecotraining.org.in. Thank you.